And everyone, Mo Harkless, Joe Weiskamp, and Tony Snell eyed for free agents amid struggles. Uh, based on what Mark Stein said, according to the NBA writer Mark Stein, the Lakers have indeed looked at free agency for a potential in-season roster boost. First, Mo Harkless, and more recently, Joe Weiskamp and Tony Snell. But the sense I got after spending the past week in LA is that their preference is to wait for the return of Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant before making judgments that could lead to changes. So this makes a lot of sense uh, in regards to like the Lakers trying to, to see what kind of impact they could have, right? They haven't made a trade. They haven't brought any, any free agents in, although they've worked them out. Uh, Mo Harkless, uh, Joe Kais uh, Weiskamp, and then uh, Tony Snell. But Clearly, they must have not made a big enough impact to bring them in. Or even if they did, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Do you do you bring them in and wave, you know, winning Gabriel, who's been solid for us? Uh, you know, Austin Reeves, who's been solid for us. Matt Ryan, who won us a game and has been, you know, a, a consistent three-point shooter. Um, or do you just kind of leave what you have and let Dennis Schroeder, Thomas Bryant come in and see if they have an actual impact. Um, now, we'd all love a trade, right? We'd love even just a minor trade. Even if you're not trading Russell Westbrook, take Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, go make a move, especially with Schroeder coming back. Makes a lot of sense. Schroeder comes in. If he actually does have an impact, then you don't. Then that means you need less of Kendrick Nunn and less of you know uh, Patrick Beverly because Schroeder can do basically what you were hoping both of them would do and give you some defense and some scoring, which the Lakers desperately need. Thomas Bryant, he could be our starting center, let AD play the four, or at least back up AD, give us some more size. He's a, a three-point uh, shooter for a big man, spread the floor a little bit, kind of operate as like our Brook Lopez type player. So hopefully with that, that will give us a little boost uh, in play. They're supposed to be coming, hopefully, uh, this weekend on Friday's game. Um, I will actually make a video diving into them and what I think their impact will be as we get closer to Friday because Thursday is when they get evaluated. So I don't want to jump the gun on a video like that, but look forward to that. Um, in the meantime, right, like, you know, if we could do Buddy Hield, Miles Turner, Spurs deal, you know, whatever deal, right? If we could do something like that, that would be great. That would be fantastic. But, you know, how do we know exactly what we need and how far off we are uh, without actually evaluating this team as a whole? Right, so Friday and the next few days, the next handful of games, everyone should be healthy, and that'll give us an idea of how good or bad is this team, what players need to go, and what players do or are out there that are available to come in and really help. Right, the Miles Turner are great, but based on what we've seen so far, Buddy Hield alone isn't going to solve all of our lack of three-point shooting. Miles Turner doesn't help our wing defense. Right, he helps a little bit with rebounding, but he's not an elite rebounder. Right, uh, he's not a guy that's going to come in and really, you know, change the landscape of our rebounding uh, just immediately. He's a seven point or seven rebound a game guy, right? And he's had trouble in the past working with uh, other bigs like Sabonis, things like that. So that's a real question. But let's say Dennis Schroeder comes in and Thomas Bryan is great, right? Let's say they're both contributing 15 points each a game over the first five games, well, then maybe now we don't need a big man. So maybe now we can go look at getting, you know, uh, say the Spurs deal and not get Yaka Pertle and, you know, just get Josh Richardson, Doug McDermott, and then use the 21 million trade exception to maybe go get like a Terry Rozier or something like that. Like just a go-to score, something along those lines, right? Or or maybe we could even use the trade exception and some pieces, try to go get, you know, a, a Kyrie or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there, but... You know, based on how this team looks when all the pieces are together could dictate what type of move and change we make, right? Because you don't want to go get Miles Turner and Thomas Bryant is the perfect fit and he works great. And it's like, well, darn it, we shouldn't have wasted a first round pick getting Miles Turner when Thomas Bryant is providing the same thing. You know, what if Thomas Bryant comes in and he's, you know, he's knocking down threes at a, at a you know, 33% clip, 34% clip, which is, you know, basically Miles Turner, right? <clears throat> Say he's knocking down threes at a reasonable clip. Uh, you know, he's getting rebounds, he's blocking shots. He's he's basically acting like a Miles Turner light, right? Then why would you go and trade for Turner? You know, let's say, you know, Dennis Schroeder comes in, right? And he's, you know, solid defensively. You know, he's he's creating, he's giving us rebounds, he's giving us assists. He's he's playing like the Dennis Schroeder we know. He's playing like let's say the Germany Dennis Schroeder. 
Well, now you don't really need Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn. Now they've become more expendable. And you, you could justify trading Russell Westbrook, right? Because now it's like, well, we could get rid of all of our guards. LeBron's going to play point a lot of the times. You still have Austin Reeves, who can handle the ball a little bit. Walker's handled the ball a little bit. You know, you, you have Dennis Schroeder, who could do that. Well, now let's go get let's go turn all of our, our guards into wings. You know, it just opens the door for more potential and more possibility. Right. Instead of the Lakers just rushing to go get a trade done, which don't get me wrong, I do believe we need. But with Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant coming back, if they can get in the swing of things and we can rattle off some wins and they look good, maybe we don't need as many players or as as big of a turnaround as it seems. Because like right now, looking at the Lakers roster, plethora of guards, right? And the question is, is which ones are expendable, right? Now, Kendrick Nunn obviously is the most expendable, but do we really need Patrick Beverly for his defense? Or can we get away with getting off of him and Dennis Schroeder providing the same defense that Patrick Beverly is? Now he becomes more expendable. Also, looking at this roster, it looks like we need three, four, maybe five guys, right, to really turn this season around. Like, we need almost a whole roster rehaul. But what if Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant are now two of those guys that we need that can come in and provide a solid punch? Well, now you have two guys. Now, instead of us needing four or five guys, maybe now we only need one or two guys to come in and really make an impact. Because now you got Walker, you got Schroeder, you got Bryant, you got Davis, you got LeBron, you got Westbrook, you got, you know, you got Austin Reeves, you got Troy Brown, you got... You know, you got five, six, seven, eight guys that can all give you 10 points a game consistently. And then you also have your stars, right? Because right now, it is Walker. <laughs> it is Walker, Troy Brown, Austin Reeves, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. Those are the only guys that are providing you real scoring night in and night out, right? So you basically have your your big three and then Walker, Brown, and Reeves are doing the bulk of our scoring. You know, Gabriel's had a couple nights where he's really chimed in, stuff like that. But for the most part, it is our big three and those three guys. Now, if Schroeder comes in and he could be a guy that gives you 15, well, now you have the big three, now you have four guys. Thomas Bryant comes in and he could give you 10 to 15. Now you have the big three, now you have five guys. So now you legitimately have an eight-man rotation that you know can come in and contribute, play defense, give you a scoring punch. Let's go get one more starting level player. You know, let's go get, like, what do we need? Do we need a, a scorer? Do we really need a wing defender? Like a 3 and D style wing guy? Do we really need another big? You know, maybe Thomas Bryant, you know, he'd be better suited coming off the bench than starting, you know? And and Davis, let's go get a particular... It just opens the door for more guys. Because, look... Damian Jones has been terrible for the Lakers. Uh, winning Gabriel, like I said, has been fantastic. He's just really undersized. And that really hurts because I really like what we've seen from winning Gabriel this year. His hustle is much needed. But when you don't have other bigs, it, it, it becomes a problem. And we are an Anthony Davis injury away from being god-awful once again, which is... Again, part of the concern. So Damian Jones has just not been the answer. Hopefully Thomas Bryant can come in and be a bit of the answer and really kind of bolster this this uh, you know front court. And then you could have Winning Gabriel play in spots. You know Thomas Bryant can also shoot the three, so you could have him play in spots. It just gives us the opportunity to really sort sort of explore the proper trades, like get very targeted in trades. And see, like, are we, are we really a player or two away? You know, are we really uh, one or two guys away from being a contender? You know, and actually being there, right? Because we're in all these games for the most part. Outside of like a couple games, we've been in all of them, and most of them we should have won, right? So now you're looking like, okay, can Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant come in and contribute? You know, I'm not saying that the two of them are going to immediately make us a title contender. No, but. Do they make us that do they make us better, right? And how much better? You know, because you add an extra 30 points, an extra, you know, 11 rebounds, and an extra, you know, two blocks and two steals and, you know, 10 assists between those two guys, then that's an impact, right? 
If the Lakers score an extra 30 points a game, well then that's 30 that's 30 points that they that they have as cushion. They get an extra 10 rebounds a game, well then that is an extra 10 rebounds that they got now as a cushion, right? Like assists, all of those things, right? Right, the penetration. Kid Schroeder knocked down the three ball. Can Thomas Bryant knock down the three ball? Now you got the floor spread better, right? They can have a lot of an impact on this team. Again, not saying that it'll make them a contender, but it could make them like a legit playoff team now. And once you're a legit playoff team, that means you're usually one or two guys away from being a legit contender. So now the Lakers could do what they need to do to go become a legit contender, use those draft picks if they need to, right? So that is the difference here. Honestly, I don't think any of the free agents, like I like Mo Harkless. I think he could be a solid just defensive minded player. If he gives you some three, he gives you some three. Cool. Um, you know, if you had a roster spot open, sure, bring in Mo Harkless, right? I think he's got good size, got good length. He can he can really defend. He's got like a seven foot wingspan. Um, but does he move the needle at all? No. You know, maybe you get an impact guy like a Stanley Johnson. Maybe Mo Harkless can kind of be your, you know, your Stanley Johnson this year possibly but even then he wasn't like a huge needle mover he just really he just became a solid contributor that really helped uh same thing you know with tony snell right like tony snell is so inconsistent right he'll give you a perfect game put up 29 points in the next game play 28 minutes and give you zero points it's insane um but again he's not a really a needle mover like you know if we had a roster spot why not give him a chance low risk high reward type play um i think wise game out of everybody, like if you were going to choose any of them, it would be him just because I think he's young enough. You know, he's, he's a shooter, right? He's got good size, got good length for a shooter. He's got, he's basically a Duncan Robinson and he even kind of looks like Duncan Robinson, which is, I think is funny. Like you look at some images, there's even like images comparing the two of them because they do look very similar. Um, you know, and your hope is that he kind of becomes a Duncan Robinson, where he's just like a solid three-point shooter that can play in pinches, play in spots, you know, kind of be your Matt Ryan. Now you got Matt Ryan and you got this guy, you know. I would give him the be- the, the chance just because, you know, like I said, he's young, shooting, all of that stuff. He could be a gem. If it doesn't work out, you just let him go. You just cut him, right? That could be a huge benefactor. But I still think that none of these guys are the answer, and you're better off Seeing what you, the next five games are all outside of the Suns should be very winnable. I do think the Lakers should still beat the Suns, but you should win at least, you know, three to four out of your next five, hands down. And so based on how it looks with Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant, especially if they're back Friday for that first game, that means you get a five game sample size to see what does Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant look like. And now you actually have a picture of what does this team as a whole look like? Do they just run the board and just run, you know, the Pistons, the Spurs, and the Suns out of the building? And it's like, man, like, let's say we just smack the Suns, and we smack the Spurs three straight times, and we smack the the Pistons. Like, yeah, you could look at it as like, well, you know, you played the Pistons and the Spurs. Yeah, but it's hard to beat any team three straight times in a four-game span, and we just beat them by an average of like 15 points. Right. And then, you know, the Phoenix Suns, man, that's a team that, you know, they're the best in the West and we just beat them by 15 points. And Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant had a huge part of that. Right. It gives you kind of a better idea and understanding of what to expect. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below.